Welcome to Career Chronicles. You can uh, see what I've been doing. Anyway, Career Chronicles, you might be wondering what it is. Well, as you know, if you've been watching, and for those who haven't, it's just me at home, quarantine, lockdown, blah, 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 talking to some of my friends, people I know, and watch, letting you watch me talk to them. It's really about actors talking to actors, but occasionally, occasionally, I get an opportunity so good, I just cannot actually miss it. And this is one of those times. So the person I'm talking to today is kind of an actor. They're definitely a performer and they're also one of the top athletes in the world. Right now, we're going a little bit off kilter with the actors and we're talking to someone very special. So we can call this Career Chronicles off the stage. And my guest at this time is a champ, the champ. In fact, I'm going to give it the full introduction I think it deserves. He is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Drew McIntyre, how are you, my man? Living the dream, kind yeah. of. I mean, it's a very unique circumstance, but technically I'm living the dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, crazy times, man. Well, i got to say, firstly, this is an honour for me to talk to you because, uh, you know, performer to performer is, is one thing, but I, I'm, a, I'm a big wrestling fan and I've watched your journey and it's very, very inspiring. So congratulations on, on everything, mate. Yeah, I appreciate that, buddy. Congratulations on all your success also. So a couple of UK lads doing all right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man. How's um how is this? It's a very difficult time, obviously, for a lot of people. How is how is lockdown treating you? What's a typical I I know you're still getting to work, but generally, what's a typical lockdown day for you? Um yeah, it's very strange. You know, when you work with the WWE, you're on the road fifty-two weeks a year, um, at least for two days minimum, four days generally, sometimes three weeks at a time for international tours, and suddenly yeah. We're doing live, one live TV show a week, home six days a week. And I drive to Orlando and back again. So I'm sleeping at home seven days a week. So it's very different in the sense I'm home all the time. Very different because of the current climate. I basically wake up, I do some media, get to talk yeah. to some people, meet some new people. I yeah. talk about, which is crazy, I do all I do is talk about what I love. I talk about wrestling, I talk about the fact I'm the WWE champion. And then for the rest of the day, I generally mess around on social media, which I never used to do. I was never a big <laughs> fan of social media, but yeah. I'm finding myself getting, getting lost on there for a lot of, a lot of the day. And yeah. I, I finally built my gym in my garage, which has been in planning for about five years in my head. I walked in the gym one day. The guy gave me the signal. We're closing all the gyms. I turned around, got in the car, drove straight to the you know, new and used uh, gym equipment store yeah. and bought whatever I could get my hands on before the rush came. And the rush came and they have no equipment now. And, uh, fantastic, man. I, I kind of did the same. Probably not as big as, and as nice as yours, but I definitely was straight on the get the dumbbells, get the bar. My wife was getting the TRX uh, uh, things and we've been training in the garden, which is, uh, which is, which is a good thing. So... Um, I've, I've, I've listened to a lot of your interviews and, you know, you're born in, in Scotland, Air Scotland, and you wanted to wrestle when you were young. And I've heard you say that you and your brother just used to wrestle and were kind of obsessed, obsessed with it. What made you get obsessed with wrestling as opposed to theatre or TV? What was it about the wrestling that really drew you into it? And I wish I could pinpoint it exactly. I just have always loved it. It'd be interesting to hear what got you into it for so long. But uh, I remember watching with my cousins when I was really, really young. Mm. And my brother is one year younger. And then my dad getting uh, my brother and I some VHS tapes. Like there was an old British yeah. wrestling one called Tag Teams and Tearaways that I remember we had. And uh, WrestleMania 7, the main event was Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, man. We wa yeah. watched those things to pieces. And we watched them every day, multiple times a day, until mm. the videotape stopped working. And we got really upset. <laughs> so my dad bought us a couple more and back in the days of Blockbuster for people yeah, yeah. that are a bit younger there used to be a place called Blockbuster where you could rent VHS videotapes right. right. I remember it I remember it um, I, but I, yeah I, they used to get all the tapes in. I kind of got into it the same way uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit older than you but it was it was the same sort of thing I think it was the escapism and the storytelling the good versus bad uh, thing because I, obviously I, always, I also like film and TV but you know me being uh, 100, well, I mean, now 175 pounds when I'm soaking wet, <laughs> you know what I mean? Five foot nine. Shred it, shred it. <laughs> Five foot nine. So back in the days, there was absolutely no chance of me being a wrestler, but I think it was that escapism, you know, that, that thing that just, uh, that I loved so much. And, and like yourself, when you talk about your brothers, I used to practice, practice and choreograph uh, 
matches as well. Um, yeah, yeah, so larger than life, I guess. When yeah. you turn on the wrestling and like you say, it's, you know, you're a kid, you like to watch your stories and read your stories. And then there's these larger than life performers telling these kind of simple good versus evil stories, just these giant guys in these over the top colorful costumes. And as a kid, you're just drawn in. Everyone assumes you're going to grow out eventually, but guys like us just love it and get so into it. You never grow out of it or you take it too far. And never start. grow out of it. When we become WWE champion. Like, interestingly, what, what, I, what I love about now, right now, obviously there's loads of opportunity for, we'll talk about the current situation later, but there's loads of opportunity for wrestlers. Um, for, for example, as I said, when I was young, I was 5'9", you know, one, I'm still 170 now, you know, I wasn't that when I was a kid. Um, you know, uh, I'm black, whatever. There was absolutely no chance of me, I feel like making it. But nowadays, a kid from England, Scotland, Ireland, wherever, can be of colour, they can be 170, they can get into the Indies, get to NXT UK, get to WWE, and like, they can win it. Like, it's, isn't that, how do you think that, don't you think it's amazing? Do you think it's amazing how times have changed that way? Yeah, I mean, uh, the times have changed in many different ways. Another big thing is, you know, our females and our women uh, evolution oh, and revolution. Yeah. The women are getting so many opportunities now that they've deserved for many years. And I'm glad that I've got to kind of see it all because, uh, like you say, that there wasn't, um, you know, much of a way to make it to WWE in the UK when I first started. I used to travel from Air to Portsmouth, the 12 hour right, train yeah. journey when I was 15, convincing my mum took a couple of years to let me go. <laughs> That's uh, right. It was the only wrestling so school. You your studies, right? As long as you completed your studies. Yeah, as cool. long as I finished it. And I stuck in at school and I got my criminology degree 21. Yeah, the same yeah. year I got signed by WWE, but it used to be such a process going back and forth. And when I got signed, after hearing from everybody, that's the American thing. Drew the wrestler, he thinks he's going to be a wrestler. First ever Scottish guy, whatever, may keep dreaming. But I did yeah, keep wow. dreaming. I kept working my ass off. And then I was the first Scottish guy I ever signed to go there. But back then, they just basically cherry picked you. They just dropped you in America. Yeah. And at 21, 22, it's such a culture shock. And, yeah. you know, you don't know what to expect. Like now, like the way the scene is, like we have so many different good wrestling schools in the UK, the scene's on fire, on NXT fire. UK yeah. is there, it's the direct route to WWE, and you don't even have to go to WWE, it's got its own television show on the network, That's and right. there's just so many opportunity for um, you know, different shapes and sizes and females, like if you're good basically now, you will get the opportunity, it's not a case of you have to be, you know, 6'5 and whatever, like 270, which I happen to be, thankfully. But also, I had to work really hard to get <laughs> yeah, to this point. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, I've watched most of it. And you're right, man. I was calling, somebody found a tweet of mine from 2017 when I was like, we need female tag team champions. And so I was really chuffed when, uh, when they pulled it up. So obviously, I tried to do things a little bit different. And you've talked about your career a lot and the journey and going, uh, getting signed, going, uh, having your match against Ryder and Hawkins, going back to FCW, and coming back and then of course you came back and there was this chosen one thing and you know we talked to i heard you talk about that a lot when that happened when that happened i know you said you didn't know it was going to happen you came to the ring after when that did happen and you went home that night or whatever were you kind of like yeah i'm smug i am the chosen one or did you suddenly get home to the hotel room and be like oh shit now I have to be the, what kind of pressure was there on you personally? Because I've heard everyone talk about this, that, and the other, but you personally, what did you feel when you were alone in the hotel room later that evening? Um, yeah, I mean, when I was alone, it was probably different in front of everybody. Back then, you know, I was, I was pretty sure of myself. I go as yeah. far to say as cocky. You know, I'd kind of always been given opportunities since I was a kid. I was always, this is the guy that's going to be the one. This is the one I was going to make it from the UK. And thankfully I did. This is going to be the top guy. FCW, like you say, the WWE's developmental. I was a champion there. Yeah. And suddenly I'm on WWE TV and Vince McMahon saying, this guy's the future. He's a future world champion. I'm and like, you were there in weeks. Yeah. Like, you got three or four weeks. You were there in weeks. Yeah. Right? I mean, I got to America. Like I landed and Wade Barrett, like uh, you'll know who he is, but for everyone else, like yeah. an English wrestler that was signed, one of my good friends. Uh, he was getting there three weeks later after I got signed. So I was coming from Scotland he was coming from London um, and we were going to basically meet and then just come up with a plan how we were going like, to live and pay our bills and maybe move in together and whatever but by the time he got there I was already on television That's right. trying to figure out like this crazy world of WWE but thankfully they realized uh, he's not quite ready and that's yeah. when he sent us to Florida Championship Wrestling from but, Louisville, but, Kentucky yeah. to Tampa, Florida. That's right but again when you came back and you heard that chosen one thing and it was all great and everyone was like congrats blah 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 or there was the haters like looking at you like sideways when you got to that room what did you think? What were you thinking? Yeah, uh, as much as I put on the cocky face for um, everybody, maybe at the building, when I got back to the room and closed the door, I was, oh, God. 
that's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's insane. Like, uh, you know, I can't show this to anyone else, but oh my goodness, uh, that's a lot of pressure for one. One is really cool. Vincent Matt has never gone on television and pointed that somebody went, this is the guy, this is yeah. my guy, yeah. the future. And two, oh my goodness, that's a lot of pressure. And yeah. Things were different back then. Like now yeah. we're, we're a team back then, but there was a lot of guys who were kind of like, well, why is it not me? Yeah, oh, that's a good looking, good looking back you've got there. Let me stick this knife into it. Like these <laughs> yeah, days, right. we're, we're like very much about helping each other these days and pushing right. forward and pull, pulling each other up. Right. Back then, there was a lot of guys that have been around for a while that weren't very happy that this 23, 24 year old was decided to be the future when they'd been so many years. And imagine. we're definitely waiting for me to mess up. I can imagine, I can imagine. I remember watching all of that and going, well, he definitely looks the part, man. I look forward to it, you know? So I, I was, I'm, I'm chuffed that we're here now so uh what do you think has been the biggest lesson uh and 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 don't just equate it to wrestling but in terms of life in general what have you kind of learned over this process of 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 your career um you know the ups and the downs what would you say if you had to sum up for a a young person watching who wants to be an actor or a wrestler whatever what would you say your biggest lesson's been um humility um gratefulness like always appreciate any opportunity you're given if somebody gives you um, some positive feedback take it appreciate it just don't let it go to your head just let it show you you're on the right path but always be willing to learn always be open and always like my thing is now all right no matter what i can learn something from anybody no matter what position they're in at the top yeah. the bottom outside the industry you can always learn from everybody just to always have an open mind always be grateful and always be humble because yeah. young drew was not <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well yeah everyone everyone has to learn these things all right i'm gonna play a little thing here now called best right so basically i'm gonna say to you drew mcintyre what is your best or what was your best whatever it is and you got to tell me what the best thing of that ever was for you so i'm gonna go into my little my hat him thing here and pull out drew mcintyre what's the best ever t-shirt you've had best ever t-shirt uh i can't even remember anything my favorite one i guess i had a Guns N' Roses one for Use Your Illusion 2 that I still have to this day that has holes in it. My wife just got me this little Rick t-shirt from the show Rick and Morty that I also Oh yeah, love. great show. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd say that Use Your Illusion 2 shirt I had for so long and I still have it. It's got holes in it. I worked at Tea in the Park. I worked at Download Festival and I still have it to this day. And yeah. I'm talking like 2002, 2003, That's I think. I- that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We all have the, I, I have a Benetton one, which has holes all in the, in the uh, armpits and it's really raggedy and it's faded, but it's just, you know, those ones that just, uh, they just. Yeah, I'm sure the message wants to get rid of it like mine, but there's no way, too much history. Um, yeah, she was using it as a dish towel the other day, I'm pretty sure, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one more. Drew McIntyre, what is the best cake you have ever had? I'm not a big dessert guy. Like uh, I do eat a lot of cheat meals. Like every day, I have a cheat meal. High metabolism. <laughs> but, is it uh, cheat meal if it's every day? Is, is it, or is it? Just yeah, a- no, it's just part of my day. I just got high metabolism. I need to eat a lot. Yeah. Um, but uh, ah, my wedding cake. I remember that was awesome. We still have some in the freezer. We got married three years ago. There's uh-huh. still some of that wedding cake in the freezer. I plan to smash someday. Hope it doesn't make me sick. It's been a while. Yeah, I, was, I, I wonder about that too. Do you know what? Weirdly, I knew you were going to say that. I don't know why, but I knew you were going to say that. But, but quite rightly, quite rightly. Um, so what I wanted to ask next is, you've often said, and I, you know, I've listened to, I watched the Break It Down, I listened to After the Bell, I listened to Lillian's thing, I watched the bump, you know, I'm trying to- oh, wow. Thank you for taking the time. A hundred percent, you know, I, I, to be fair, a lot of it I'd seen already, but just to refresh, you know, I'm a fan, so. Um, thank you. You say a few times that when the release came, when you were doing the 3MB stuff, you said a few times that you were surprised. Me as a fan for 30 odd years and as a person who watched, has literally watched consistently for that whole time since I was 10 years old. I kind of wasn't surprised um, because I didn't feel like, you said you guys were on everything, but I didn't feel like you were going anywhere. Do you, do you, know, do you know what I mean? I don't mean that to be- uh, Oh, we were. <laughs> so, so That's a fact. Why were you, why were you, what was surprising about it? Was it an arrogance or were you just comfortable in your position at the time? Yeah, I guess being comfortable in the position and just growing up there. Like I went straight from Scotland, lived with my parents at high school, straight into university, straight to WWE. And I was just turned 29 at the time. So I'd grown up in WWE. I didn't know any better. I just assumed I'll be there until I retire. Yeah. And like you say, comfortable in the position, kind of lost perspective. Just this is my life. This is the way it is. We're on everything. 
You know, like yeah. a show needs a var- there's a variety show. Like every show you're on, you can't always be the leading man walking yeah. away from the like throwing the match behind you, the flames going up, carrying the girl. There's all got to be like some of the <laughs> got to be the clowns. There's got to be some different acts. Just so yeah, happened we're right. the clowns in that situation, so I had to kind of accept that. So getting the call was a genuine surprise. I was like, oh, okay, I never saw that coming. Like I just always imagined I'd be here. This is going to require some thinking now. Yeah, require some thinking. But when you were doing that stuff, had you kind of lost the focus of one day I want to be champion, or I was said I was going to be champion, or were you just kind of were you kind of not thinking about that at the time? Because like when yeah, I look yeah. at, when I look at you three then, I was like, well, none of them can be champion. When I look at you three now, the two that are still there and and unfortunately he has been released. But when I look at you three now, I'm like, well, I can I can see it. So at the time, were you still thinking I could be champ? So I'm just going to enjoy this now, or was it kind of like they're never going to find me? I'll just wait till my turn comes around. I guess like in my head, and I can still kind of remember. I, I wasn't getting much match time. Whatever I got match time, I'd always get such positive feedback. And it seemed like uh, Heath would generally be doing the wrestling because it kind of he was 3MB. He was the entertaining, over-the-top character and was very funny. Whenever I wrestled, it was very aggressive and serious and didn't really match the 3MB shtick. No. So I didn't get to, to wrestle too much. But in my head, I thought, maybe not WWE title, but at least if I get the proper opportunity, I could get a run at that IC title and who knows no. beyond that. So still in the back of my mind, it wasn't a giving up completely, this is life. It was, I get the opportunity to go in the ring. I know I can go in the ring. I know how aggressive I am and not many yeah. people can match that aggressiveness even at the time. Uh, maybe we'll get to the IC title. So I hadn't given up completely, but right. definitely not the same mindset I had even four, three, four years prior to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. wow. Um, what I always liked about... <clears throat> See, see, what I don't like these days is when people get released, everyone's, uh, you know, out there like bad mouth in the company and this, that and the other and blah, 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 you know, and it's not that I work for the company or anything. I do what the fuck I want. You know, it's not that. Yeah. But what I always liked about your release and I, and I have searched is even if you did it to your friends, you never came out publicly and bad mouth the company because I have a real problem with people, whether they leave on going to another place or whether they are released or they've asked for their release. I feel like there's a way to do it gracefully and there's a way to not do it gracefully. And it really irks me. How did you maintain, so basically, how did you maintain your integrity and not be straight online? The internet wasn't as big then, obviously, but go straight online and start bad-mouthing the company. What made you just kind of keep yourself to yourself and put your head down? What, what is that? Is that your upbringing or? Yeah, it could be my upbringing. In fact, definitely is my upbringing, actually, my mom and dad. But also, from a business perspective, I don't see how being negative helps you in any way. Being negative only brings negativity, burns bridges potentially down the line. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not like happy about something, you didn't like something, then just probably best not to talk about it publicly because you never know what the future is going to hold. Because trust yeah. me, people were pushing me constantly during interviews to try and get so negative so. answers out of me. And I wasn't as comfortable during interviews as I am like right now. Yeah. Um, so the people really did try and push me and there was certain things that did upset me and I did feel frustrated about at the time, but then I could also step outside of myself and look and go, some of those things you're upset about, you may have brought on yourself. Yeah. And if someone directly did something to you, then that person's just like a negative influence in your life. You don't need to talk about it publicly. You know yourself. So just bear that in mind in the future and don't let it happen again. Learn from I, it. Yeah. I love that energy, man. I think it's so important and look where it's led you because you know, what I find is that there are some people that they go on to talk about the company and not just this company, any company, whatever, when they're released or when they're fired or whatever. And it's like, well, you've got millions and millions of dollars or whatever, may, might not be that much. You've got loads of money. You have exposure. You have all these social media followers because of that. How can you come out and badmouth it? It always baffles me. So I commend, I commend the way you behaved at that time and, and still do, man. You seem yeah, thank like you. a standing dude. Um, Thank you. I'm still talking to some of the guys right now. They've got some good plans, a couple of the lads. Like, I'm not a guy looking out publicly and say, talk about that stuff. You know, that's a private matter as far as I'm concerned. And I've been there and I know how it feels. So I'm yeah. advising some of the guys right now and they're going to be ready when the time comes. Good. To make well, some we're going to get to big that. noise around the world. Great. We're going to get to that in a second. But I wanted to say, you've said in a lot of interviews, um, you used to live that rock star life outside, uh, outside the ring uh, as well. And, you know, possibly that was a contributor to, to the release. I don't know originally, but what I realized on all the shows that I've seen you do when you say that is nobody's ever asked you why. So I want to know, why did you, bearing in mind you were so focused before and, you know, why, why did you not decide, but what drew you to that sort of outside the ring rock star life, 
And I don't want it to just be hopefully, well, if it, if it is this, not just where I was growing up, because I was growing up, but when I wanted to act, I focused on that. What kind of took you down that rock star uh, route? And how did your wonderful wife rein you in and turn you into the man that we see right now? Ooh, good questions. Um, so I'm trying, man. I'm, I'm new to this, but I want to be different. So, you know what yeah, I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, that's different, that's for sure. Uh, I guess, you know, being Scottish, obviously, you probably hang out and have a few drinks uh, <laughs> since you're very, very young and uh, part of the culture. But, uh, you know, I went straight from university, straight to WWE, and it was, you know, you have your nights out and whatever, and the people that I grew up around the business, that was what you did in wrestling. You have a match, and you go out afterwards, and you have some drinks, and you don't drink before the show, but you go out after the show. And I guess as the years passed, you know, I get, it did for sure get a little more out of control where it became like a few days a week or more than a few days a week and certainly not um, the kind of mindset of somebody an attitude of somebody who's supposed to be a professional athlete on WWE television and yeah. it got to the point where I don't know if it was you know I was down or angry and acting out or self-destructive I really don't know for sure like what led to the point where I was doing it just far too much and method acting since I was in a band I was acting <laughs> like I was in a band yeah, yeah. half the time maybe that's just my process <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no it's, it's not but I'll never put my finger on it exactly but um, yeah I guess this is a lot of self-destruction certainly part <laughs> of it and then when I met my wife it was a year after my mother had passed and it was almost like meant to be and she definitely started you know letting me know like no this is not helpful to you and hey, I'm certainly going to leave you if you you know keep yeah. up this silly silly behavior yeah and so she helped start reeling it back and it was we met probably about six months before i got released she doesn't didn't follow wrestling doesn't to this day doesn't care for it was kind of <laughs> didn't understand it when i found out i did it it was like, okay but then when i was released yeah. she was such a part of the process yeah of kind of like okay i'm gonna go out and i plan to tackle this country and this country and this is my plan and she would mm -hmm. help kind of formulate the plan she's part of the team the number one part of the team and then mm -hmm. the big thing was you got to start cleaning up the negative aspects of your character like you know you can look yourself in the mirror and say you didn't give it your all this is kind of on you and the in the ring and certain of those aspects but outside the ring you really got it all on that stuff too and i did you know scale way back but i was still hanging out with my buddies i hadn't seen the uk for a while yeah. i hadn't been home for years and i was seeing them all the time so i was still doing it way too much having too many nights out and then in tna um before a big pay-per-view i had an accident in newcastle I actually broke two vertebrae in my neck. Yeah. And then they, I was able to walk backstage. Um, thankfully, it was two uh, breaks in the T2, T3, non-displaced. Didn't affect the nerves or anything. But yeah. I had to wait there until an ambulance showed up. I refused to be stretched out because the fans saw me. I walked myself out Jeez. the back door, signed some autographs, took some pictures, casually walked by the side of the building and jumped in the ambulance. And then they strapped me to a stretcher. And I was in that stretcher for about seven hours. I've been oh. panic attacks. I've got video footage of it. I took pictures of myself on that, on that gurney. And after that scare, I had the first time off I've ever had in my career. I, I had maybe three weeks off before I returned and started cutting promos. But she told me during that, I was like, okay, like, you think you're giving it your all? And I was like, well, I'm the most successful wrestler outside of WWE. I'm basically the number one guy in the world outside of WWE. She was like, you can be doing even better. You can be looking better. And that should kind of scare you into cutting out everything. And that's the day I was like, all right, the partying's out the window. The alcohol's out the window. Returned back uh, to the independent scene looking completely different. Within a matter of weeks of dieting and yeah. working out harder in the gym, suddenly people went, oh, my goodness. Like, you're, you're already one of the biggest guys. I'm not the biggest guy. Now you look crazy. And within mm -hmm. a month after that, I was talking to WWE. And then I was back in NXT. Amazing. And that was the final steps. And it was all like her advising yeah. me the whole time. She's seven yeah. years younger. Well, yeah, we look, my, yeah, my wife's a bit younger as well, man. So we only, well, listen, thank you to her. Like, it sounds very similar to, to not, not all of the story, but years ago I was supposed to direct a movie and I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to do it. I'll direct in 10 years. And my wife was like, dude, I was, I was loaning you money to get tickets for, for audition, bus fares for auditions. Like, how do you know you're going to be ready in, in seven years or be able? And I was like, that's a good idea. Anyway, directed the movie, won a BAFTA, and now I'm sitting here years later with yeah. TV. So, you know, when you find the right one, my man, when you find the right one, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so women can bring down kingdoms and they can build kingdoms. Exactly. So thankfully, we got a couple of good ones. Exactly. So I'm going to play something called The Realness now. And The Realness is basically, I say to you, Drew McIntyre, what's The Realness? And just tell me something that's important to you. That's all. But, but, but be real about it. It could be anything. The environment, dogs, cats, whatever. But, you know, nice and short and sharp. But something that we might not know that you actually care about. So Drew McIntyre, 
Tell me the realness. Uh, off the top of my head, I said, cats. I have two cats. Like, I don't know. Everybody knows that. I do post some pictures and videos on social media sometimes. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of preconceptions and judgments regarding cats. Everyone loves dogs. I always say I love dogs too. I love every animal. Um, but, you you know, animals dogs are always... Yeah, yeah, I love animals, all animals, no matter what they are. Um, but, uh, you know, dogs are always one to give you love and, they're, you know, they're a bit, you know, I don't know if it's the right word. They're willing to give it to everyone. Let's just say that. <laughs> the nicest way I can say it. But they're just great. Like, dogs are fantastic. All they want is just to give out all that love. Cats, on the other hand, they do have a lot of love to give. You have to earn that love. And when yeah. you earn a cat's love and it chooses you as its human, it's a, it's a pretty special feeling. So, yeah. Understood. So I have two cats. Fantastic. All right. I love that. Um, so, uh, you know, when you came back to, um, to, uh, to WWE and you went to NXT, you obviously, um, you know, you went on a storming run, had the great success, won the title, which is all amazing. And I've, I've heard all about that on those other things. What I want to ask you is, when you uh, lost the title uh, in that match, were you supposed to lose the title in that match, or did they call it because of the injury? Uh, no one's ever asked me that before. Because it's, uh, yeah, been the is big that... mystery of... <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but, you know, well, yeah, we're grown-ups. I, I was watching that, you know, and I thought, mm, I think you're going to go over here. But then it suddenly went a bit, and I, was, I just wondered if you had signaled that you were injured and they called it, or... So, you know, you could tell me. We're friends here. Yeah, well, let's just say like there was other plans after the fact that maybe I wasn't supposed to be champion for the other plans after the fact, right. but okay. the inju injury affected those plans for a little while. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, we'll leave it there. I, I kind of know where you're going. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about the desire of, 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 um, of yourself when you were younger and, and maybe some of the people now, not necessarily for you to comment on anyone in particular, but just wanted to ask, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, if you don't want to be champ when you're in this company, then you shouldn't be here. Do you think that everybody in the company really believes that they can be the champ? I definitely don't believe everybody feels like they can be the champ. I, I would hope that people have, you know, the mindset of, a, you know, one day I hope to achieve that goal. Because there's a lot of people that aren't doing a lot on TV that I speak to privately. And kind of yeah give them advice, uh, what they can try that I've tried over the years that have succeeded. They do tell me, you know, the goal is to be champ. I'm going to give it everything in every area of my game. Because when I was a young kid, my dream wasn't to be, um, you know, in the first match. Like, kid, yeah. when you're a kid, you dream of being WWE champion. And it's like, if you make it to the dance, that's an incredible achievement as it is. That's yeah. during my first run, the perspective I lost was, I would have been happy just to be the water boy when I was a kid. And I wasn't happy being featured on television every single week at that point. And, and I had to get that, get that perspective back. There's hundreds of football teams in the world. There's tons of rugby clubs in the world. Like, you know, you work hard enough. You don't sign for one place. You might sign for some other place. There's one wrestling company, like big wrestling company. These days, it's a bit different, I guess. But back when I started, when I got signed, there was one place to go. Yeah. It was yeah. WWE. And that was like a pretty, pretty big deal just even beyond the show. Like, thankfully, now there are other alternatives and a big deal to be part of that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I, I look at it and sometimes I'm like, I look at people and I'm like, I don't, I don't buy that you believe that you can be champ. And I, I like to think that if I was there, especially now when you see that literally, you know, with your Kofi's and your Daniel Bryan's and your Rays or your smaller people, like anyone, well, you still have to be good, but anyone can win it. Like if you're good enough, you can get there, you know. But I look at yeah. some people, I'm like, I don't, I don't buy it. Um, you can make it happen in other ways as well. Look at Becky Lynch. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't always love social media. Um, I really didn't before all this stuff happened. I only use it for business-related things and didn't understand why people would put so much private stuff out there and bury yeah. themselves a lot of time online. <laughs> and Be yeah. Be Becky was the first person I saw just take, you know, social media and use it as just an incredible medium and got herself over, got herself popular, became, like, one of our top guys. She's a girl, but one of our top guys in the entire company. Yeah. She did that through okay. social media. Yeah. During this period, like this is the first time I've loved social media because I see what's going on during this pandemic. I see people helping each other out, giving each other gym yeah. challenges, uh, helping each other when they've got maybe mental health issues, etc. Yeah. Lifting each other up. So now this is the time where I'm like, okay, this is what social media was made for. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool point. time. And just like you say, if you're on the roster, things aren't happening for you. You have to find what can I do to stand out. Like yeah. if it doesn't matter how big you are, like what your situation is. You can figure out what works for you that's going to connect with the fans, that's going to get you the opportunity, that's going to put you on top, that's going to get you to be champion one day. 
just go. Yeah, exactly. Think, think, think big. Think outside the box. And they're and they're like you said, Becky did it back in the day. Zack Ryder did. It. Like people do do it, and they do get over, and it does work, man. So I, I, I think that's great. So you guys obviously have been deemed. Uh, I had a by the way, I had a big row with people on Twitter last week because when WWE was deemed essential business, I was like, great, I'm gonna keep watching it because I love it. Suddenly, I wanted everyone to die, and I was to blame for all of this stuff and blah 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 blah. You know that the. the how did you feel about when that call was made and were you glad that you guys still got to go to work? Because honestly, I was glad. And what I was saying was I was really glad that it was still on, not because I want people to get sick or anything stupid like that, because I feel like you guys provide escapism and, and entertainment. How did you guys feel? How did you feel about continuing to work during this time? Yeah, I'm very proud. Uh, we continue to push forward. I speak to one of my buddies back home in the UK. I speak to people in America here. And all they say to me is, like, I'm going crazy. Um, indoors, like, just trying to find things to keep my attention, keep me busy. I, like, if I could just have, a, like, a footy match right now, or if I could yeah. just have some kind of sporting event on right now, just, like, I'm watching these old matches, but it's just not the same. I'm really glad that you guys are still putting out, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday shows, because it's really given me something to look forward to. It's like, it's not quite the same with the jokes, but the same with the crowd, but, you know, we've got something to, to look forward to every week. You're bringing that unique content, and just yeah. hearing my close friends say that, I'm like, all right, this is worth it. Like, we, the WrestleMania, like, it was, we were, what, like, 80,000 people, it was going to be in Tampa, it was going to be the main event, I, know, I was going to be the guy, I was like, oh my God, this is a dream, and then suddenly, it's like, it's a big situation going on, it's going to be in the PC in front of nobody, and you saw the WWE Chronicle and the WWE Network. Yeah, you see yeah. my reaction initially. I'm angry as hell. Like I yeah. just couldn't believe it. Like 19 years, like especially 13 years in America. I make it to the top. I'm fighting Brock Lesnar for the WWE title yeah. in front of nobody. I flew yeah. home so angry the whole time, like so sad, so disappointed. Spoke to the wife about it, and it was over the days I started realizing how serious this yeah. situation yeah. was yeah. in the world. And I was like, wait a minute, this is selfish as hell. What can I, what am I thinking here? Yeah. Just, like, because my particular situation of war is me, Drew. I am like, there's all this no, stuff no, around but the world. I, I feel you, man. I saw that and I saw you suddenly kind of realize actually there's more going on in the world. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I did an interview. I was like, I, I do feel, I, I felt bad for you a little bit. But I wanted to say, like, what an amazing moment it was, you know, to thank you and, and you winning t the title, being the first British or, you know, Scottish man to win the title is the most amazing thing. Like, I, I congratulate you so much. Thank you. Can you... But honestly, can you wait until, are you looking forward to walking out in front of a crowd with that title on? Because like those moments were spectacular and beautiful, but you know, seeing the reaction of videos of people at home celebrating when you won, seeing that pub in Scotland <laughs> with the people going crazy. Like for you, myself, you know, watching the rumble and seeing how people reacted, have you been surprised at, have you been surprised at actually how much support you've, you have? Uh, did you realize you had that much support? And are you really looking forward to walking out with uh, a crowd there? Yeah, I mean, I never quite realized uh, the level of support I had. I mean, back home is one thing. And it was crazy to see that, like, pub reaction. Yeah, um, nice. Just everyone going mental. <laughs> it looked like a fo football final or something. Um, but, yeah, like, just see, like, across the world since then, like, everything exploding on social media and people reaching out to me and people reaching out to WWE and WWE telling me, I was like, wow, I can't believe. I was a bad guy a couple of months ago. It's not like it's not like I had like this particular moment where I saved the day and yeah. saved the girl tied to the tracks, and that made me a good guy. Like I was still talking trash, and I was crushing Eric Rowan's like pet little spider, which was a fake robotic spider. Let me clarify, it was the real spider. Yeah. And I never did anything particularly good, but then the people rallied behind me, and especially after the Royal Rumble when I eliminated Brock Lesnar, it was just insane. That oh my goodness, it's such a incredible support right now but yeah, yeah the, the idea of walking in front of the crowd you're damn right that's gonna be one of the biggest moments of my career yeah. if not the biggest moment of my career like winning the title with mania there was no one there but i looked down that camera let everyone know like thank we you were for there, supporting man. me we were there i we know and there, i know man. where that's why i was looking down the camera like i thought it'd be cut like in trees on interviews i said it this would definitely be edited i looked down the camera just thanked everyone i would screw it this is how i feel in the moment thank you for supporting me to this point where i won the title thank you for choosing wwe to take your mind off everything during this yeah. pandemic and I've said this multiple times, I'll say it again, like when we can get everyone in the building again, you know, um, I don't want, we have dark matches that are non-televised, to get the crowd warmed up. We have maybe a show called Main Event, which yeah. is uh, on the WWE Network yeah. and shown throughout the world. 
that is taped before Raw goes live. I don't want any of that. I'm going to tell Vincent Man myself, please, for the love of God, if I'm the champion, do not put anything on. Those yes. fans are so excited to be back. We're so excited yeah, to be here to perform and for you them. With the yeah, just please let me walk out with the title. Yeah. And that's our freaking wrestling moment right there. Like yeah. Everyone's going to be dying for it. I'm going yeah, to be just fired up for it and just... Well, yeah, I hope, yeah, it gives me, it gives man, 100%. <laughs> I, I see. I hope you get that because I'm looking forward to it. Um, so watching the Edge documentary, uh, it was amazing to see how many people were happy, including yourself, that he he um, uh, was back. Having an injury, you know, like back in neck injury, back injury like like you had as well. How good was it to see him come back? And how happy were you to, to, to share the ring with him? Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, I used to share the ring with him when I was a kid. He used yeah. to advise me all the time. We shared the same roster for years. You know, he's a friend of mine. And he advised me at the time he was outside the company and thankfully had some great success, you know, also in the acting world with the, yeah, uh, right. the Viking show. Um, and just assumed, you know, that's him, you know, that's his career now. He obviously won't be back wrestling. Um, and he still kept in contact with me. If he saw something on the show, maybe to work on, he would hit me up. And then just yeah. having him, I heard rumors, I didn't know for sure. And then when he yeah. walked backstage, there was just a little room with a few guys uh, that were maybe going to be at the end of the rumble. <laughs> and he walked in that room, I jumped out of the chair, I went, no! And then he was so ripped. <laughs> he was so ripped as well, the best shape of his life. That's right, and, he was uh, great. Yeah. So excited to see him. And there was a point in the rumble where AJ Styles had me in the corner. And he was choking me and I was just like, screw this. I'm just going to put my arm around his foot so he has to keep choking me because I knew Edge was coming and I wanted to hear the reaction. So I kept myself in the corner deliberately yeah, so I could enjoy the reaction. And then when his music hit, I just lay there and looked around because yeah, <laughs> I knew good. the camera wasn't on me, it was on Edge. So I just took that moment to enjoy the Edge reaction. And then yeah. I realized towards the end, oh no, when he gets eliminated, they might boo. And they might not stop booing. And I'm going to win this thing. So I got a bit scary towards the end when uh, Roman eliminated Edge and they booed, but thankfully when I put Roman out, they exploded again when I won and I went, all right, yeah. that's pretty cool. Because they've turned up matches before. They have booed the yeah, winners. Yeah, they have. I know, man. Them. I know. I remember and, uh, Pista, and then I remember Roman. And, yeah, but I, yeah. I, think, I think, you know, it was, it was you know, Roman was going to get that heat. And obviously I think, you know, I, I love Roman Reigns. I love Roman Reigns. I don't know the guy personally, but I love Roman Reigns. But oh, I he's the man. The audience are always like, please don't let Roman win. Please don't let Roman. So when you won, like it could have been me, I think it would have exploded. But I think with your journey and everything you've been through, people just wanted to see that so much. Um, so <clears throat> with the recent spate of, uh, of the releases, and I know some of the guys, maybe all I don't know, were, were friends of yours. Uh, as someone who has been through that, you know, um, and come back from it, have you, I know you touched on it earlier, have you been... Uh, giving advice to people and uh, you know uh, and what sort of uh, what sort of advice have you been given about how they can potentially come back for those that want to come back yeah we don't go into all the details but oh, of course, yeah. uh, you know they, they are my friends and uh, you know I spoke to them and uh, to be honest a lot of people are excited um, you know like I hope they would feel the same way as I did I was shocked initially but I saw it as an opportunity to like okay how can I better myself and grow and you know, when things start getting back to normal, there are so many opportunities out there right now to really, um, you know, show what you've really got. If you've got yeah. talent to, to give, you can go out there, you can travel, you can have fun, you can make money uh, while doing it and do a really good living while being creatively fulfilled and giving your image to the world rather than maybe WWE's image of you. Yeah. I mean, the time's right. If you succeed enough, you'll be back in WWE, but you'll get the opportunity to come back and maybe you'll want to, maybe you won't want to. It'll yeah. be like your call. And I've just kind of been, because like some of them have been there and been independent scene, some haven't, and it's very different now than it used to be uh, years ago. And like everybody is very upbeat about it, I'll say that much, and very excited for the yeah. future. And, and I know it's the like wrestling industry, we always see each other down the road no matter what. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll cross yeah. passes everyone once again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, we know it's unfortunate, uh, but you know, these things sometimes happen. But I look forward to uh, what a lot of them do in the future, whether it's in WWE or not, because you know, as I said, I. Uh, I, I respect the whole product, so it's not like I'm like, well, that person deserves to go. Like, I, I like everything, so I look forward to everything they're doing. Um, and, and, and I commend you for giving them the advice and whatnot. I'm um, going to play a little thing here called Got Ya. So basically, sure. Got Ya is, I give you clues to what a word is. Like I'll say, uh, cats have what on their face? And you might say, whiskers, whatever, right? So I'll give you four clues. The four clues then make up 
will give you four words and those words will make something else up and you need to tell me what that thing is. Does that make sense? Uh, no, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at articulating it. All right, <clears throat> let's go for the first one anyway. So the four words you get at the end of the, at the, end of the four clues will make up another item and that's what you need to tell me what that is. So chickens lay what? Eggs. Great, got that. Sex is sometimes called making... Love. Mm, yes, yeah, that's not the answer, but no. Whoopee. <laughs> uh, well, we'll come back to it in the end. Uh, they say this in the rhyme. What is it? Good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you... What are the... Heart. Yeah, but what are they talking about? Wind. No, what's the item that you eat? Beans. Yeah, yes, good. So we've got eggs and we've got beans, right? Yep. The little Daoshan dogs with the little legs are sometimes called what dogs? Um, I have a different name over here. What's it back home? It's got a wiener dog here. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. Sausage yes. dog. Yes, right. So we've got sausage, beans, egg, and let's go back to the other clue. Sex is sometimes called, and it rhymes, making... Uh, I'm trying to think of something that matches with eggs, beans, sausage, making bacon. Yes, making bacon. Oh, got bacon, that's, eggs. That's what it's called. I'm going to bring that up to my wife later. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, tell her. Let's make some bacon. Making bacon. So we've got bacon, uh, we've got bacon, beans, eggs, and sausage. What do you think I'm talking about? What meal is that? Um, well, over here, you probably get looked at like, what is wrong with you? But it's breakfast back home. But if you put oh. beans on over here, then they look like you're, at you like you're insane if you put beans on your breakfast here. Oh, really? They're great. They don't like it. All right, great. So breakfast. So my question to you is, uh, what's your favorite breakfast? My favorite breakfast? Uh, I make the same thing basically every day when I wake up. Um, I crack about eight eggs, sometimes 10, depending on feel, and then to the, the pan, I'll throw some cheese in there. Um, I've got these ready-made pancakes from a meal prep company that send me a bunch of meals. Fantastic. Somewhat healthy, not totally healthy. And I'll have about four of those with, with all the eggs and sometimes maybe a yogurt or something. All right, that sounds good. All right, cool, cool. All right, next one, next one. So what is the, uh, tell me what the four words make up. Right, when you go to the, when you go to a ball, men wear suits and women wear a ball. Gown. Right, good. When you have lots of flowers, they're sometimes called a flower. Bouquet. Uh, no, a, a big garden of flowers, a flower. Arrangement. Maybe, that's not the word, but you're getting there. Um, garden. Not quite. A portable uh, computer that Apple first introduced. Their one is called an iPad, but others are known as just. Laptop. Now, tablet. I'm gonna give you that one tablet. So we've got tablet. Tablet. Right. tablet and we've got a gown. Um, if you laugh so much, sometimes people say, oh man, I laugh so much, he had me in. Stitches. stitches. So we've got gown, stitches, and tablet. What kind of place are we talking about? Ooh, I assume at the hospital. Boom, man, you, you are quite good at this. You're getting, you're getting there, here we go. So we've got, oh, and yeah. the other- You're helping me dramatically, I appreciate that. <laughs> and the other one was flowers, sometimes you call a flower bed, right? So ah, of course. Stitches, gown, bed and tablets so when was the last time you were in hospital uh, it's been a while actually i guess for the the bicep tear must okay. have been the last time yeah um oh wait that's that's a lie actually i had a minor a minor surgery um last year right um when i was uh, doing a mexico tour right after i had to get a minor surgery i disappeared from tv for about eight weeks and rick flair brought me back i don't know if you remember that moment i was the last member of team flair versus team hogan yes, rick flair you. gave me the i said to flair during the day you know you know just if you get the chance you're out there i wouldn't mind a wheel and dealing son of a gun introduction sir and sure enough he went out there i was like ah this guy the wheel and dealing kiss stealing <laughs> son of a gun Kissed all the girls in Cleveland twice already. <laughs> that was like backstage, like, woo. <laughs> woo, this yeah. Really, this is pretty cool. And then sure enough, like from that moment uh, till now, that's the first day I started kind of showing my personality and WWE yeah. allowed me to kind of let that personality out because I had Flair yeah. going, go on, show them the guns, kid. 
I was like, well, yeah. I'm going to flex. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then Flair would kind of push me along to show more of my personality. Yeah, because that's when you said, you've, you've said in other interviews, you've started becoming more the real Drew now. So that was, that, that was the start of it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like Paul Heyman just told me recently, like the exact moment, I guess, where they said, you know, maybe we should give this guy a lot more mic time to be himself. We, I was having a dark match, like again, non-televised match after Rod finished. Yeah. For the live crowd, it was a cage match and they needed time uh, to buy time when the cage was being lowered and set up. And they said, just go out and speak on the mic for it, which a lot of people panic about the idea of talking. It's yeah. what I love to do is when I was outside the company, that's all I did was talk in the microphone because yeah. I wanted to get comfortable and good at it. And I went out and I sat in the barricade and I just had a laugh with the crowd. And as they were leaving, some of them kind of stopped and started paying attention. I was very interactive with them, just okay. being Drew, being my real self. And they saw that and went, well, there's a lot more he can give. Well, let's give him a little more opportunities. Sure. And with Paul Heyman at the helm, like he knew I could do already, but he, could, he was able to point and say, that's the Drew we need on TV now. Well, good. I love that. And I love that you've got an opportunity to show it because I think the real Drew is the, is the man we want to see as a WWE champion. All right, last one quickly before we wrap up. Chris Jericho's tribute band was called what? Is called what? Fuzzy. Yes. Fuzzy when, Osborne originally. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know. When kids save money, they save it in what kind of bank? Piggy. Yes. Where are we going? Fuzzy, Piggy. What are the clues? You got two clues there? Uh, the Muppets. Ah, yes. Yes, he's got it. So... <laughs> The other, yeah, the other clue was Tad Bowles eventually turned into Frog, and then it was another one, blah, blah, blah. The Muppets. Who's your favourite Muppet? Uh, God, I kind of guess Kermit's my favourite, mostly because one of my buddies used to do, like, parodies where he put a voice over the top of a Kermit, um, <laughs> like, Muppet, and, like, do, like, silly Scottish uh, comedy with it. So that's probably hey, he why. Needs, um, he needs to still do that. That's funny. He should still be doing that. One oh, it's he... hilarious. It's just not PG at all. Um, that's fine. What's the other one? Beaker. I like that because it reminds me of Seamus. Oh, so yes! <laughs> he does remind Colin me. Colin Beaker, and he, he does, yeah. he'd, do the, he'd do the impression as well. Like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> his, his red hair. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Oh, man, well, listen, you are most certainly not a Muppet. Drew McIntyre, congratulations on everything you've achieved. Congratulations on the journey. Congratulations on being the WWE champion. And thank you for taking the time for this interview. Drew McIntyre, your career has been chronicled. You know, thank you, brother. I really appreciate you having me. And hopefully everyone out there can get a little inspired. A couple of guys that grew up in council houses with big dreams were able to pull it off. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, my man. So that was Drew McIntyre, the WWE champion. An amazing story, an amazing journey. Someone I hope you can all agree is just uh, inspiring um, by going through what he has been through, you know, snatching victory basically from the jaws of defeat and uh, climbing the ranks to become what he was always predicted as, you know, the a future world champion. Well, he's a present world champion. He is the world champion. And uh, I commend him for the man that he is. Uh, I guess we all have to commend his wife for helping him turn him into the man that he is. And uh, he seems like a genuinely humble and lovely guy, um, you know, and he said he wasn't that when he was younger. So it shows that everybody goes on the journey, everybody changes in their life. Everybody can be uh, better people. Everybody can be people that learn consistently and become better people. So congratulations to Drew McIntyre for everything you've achieved, my man. Your career has been chronicled. And for anyone who listens to this, as I always say, you know, be kind to everyone. You know, be real with everyone. Don't, you know, speak your mind, say what you need to say and cut toxic people out of your life. We don't need them, man. Life's too short, you know? And then that, that, that sent, those little three sentences become the thing I always say at the end of the show. Be kind, be real, be ruthless.